Well, Dheeraj Agarwal is now joining us. Uh, he's Managing Director, Ambit Investment Managers. Uh, Dheeraj, great to have you with us Hi, here. Good morning. Appreciate it. Uh, so how are things looking? I mean, should I be asking that question? It's <laughs> absolutely fine, right? Yeah, how things, will they look is the question uh, think, from here on. Things are looking fine. I think March volatility was a little torrid, as you mentioned on the show a little yeah. while ago, that uh, with March, quite a, quite, a, quite a large number of names, which were the best performers going into March last six or eight months, uh, took a bit of a knock, right? So mid caps and PSUs uh, all suddenly fell 15, 20% in a span of seven, eight, nine days and mid caps yeah. maybe three or four weeks. Uh, all of them seems to have clawed back. So uh, two things are helping the market sentiment in the near term. Uh, there's a clear dovish tilt by the Fed mm -hmm. in the March 20th meeting. Uh, although they keep on going a little bit of back, a little bit back and forth in the subsequent statements. Mm -hmm. But I think on the whole, the tilt is uh, dovish. And second, uh, uh, our strategist was telling us that uh, most two months or three months going into elections are much strong because mm -hmm. the optimism starts to creep in what the new government will do, uh, things they could not do in the previous term. They'll we'll get manifestos complete. shortly. I mean, I think next week we'll have, we'll get the manifestos, right? And yeah. People will pour over them. Correct. Hopefully they'll be well detailed on the econo econ uh, economic front. Correct. So that should act as a trigger. Yeah, that could act as a trigger. And optimism is building up that number of unfinished agendas of the last term could get completed in the next term, etc. This always happens. So, uh, yeah, we could see a near-term bit of a move. Medium-term, uh, I think the markets will continue to be choppy. That's my view. Okay, so near-term, you could see a move. But uh, we're getting a lot of questions from viewers, uh, from investors about what happens post the elections, right? Yeah. Because if this is a build-up to the elections and once that whole election trigger plays out, then do we normalize to sort of, uh, I mean, are we getting into sort of a time-wise correction for the market? Is it going to be a period of no growth at all? How do we approach it throughout this calendar year? So throughout this calendar year, uh, I've been of the view of the markets, but I call it non-linear. So uh, we saw sort of a linear markets over the last 12 months. Uh, very small pullbacks and markets kept on rallying. Mm. Uh, this year, I think markets have been non-linear. So you'll see a lot of ups and downs through the year. Uh, for the whole year, I wouldn't be surprised if we close the year in a plus minus 5% range and mm. not a huge return the way we saw last year. Uh, the reason for that is, if you see the earnings performance uh, of the large caps, it's, mm. there's a lot of dispersion trend. So, uh, capex-oriented or investment-oriented businesses are still doing okay, but yeah. they're slightly richly valued. Mm. Uh, consumption weakness, which started with only rural weakness a quarter or two quarters ago, now seems to be percolating upwards even to the urban products and demand. Mm. That's a little bit of a worry. Mm. So, uh, there, are, there are cycles and then there are counter cycles which is happening, which in my view, is a little bit of a risk for earnings going forward. And the, and the margin benefit which uh, the companies got because of sharp fall in WPI uh, will start to fade away soon. Mm, you know, I was just uh, wondering, the, some of these commodity prices are moving up. What's going to happen to some of those, uh, you know, say those wire makers, those cables companies? You know, suddenly you'll start factoring in that, hey, commodity prices are yeah. going up, and that's what's going to hurt the margin. So let's see how that goes. But since we were on the topic of elections, and I think that you were in the camp that's like two wheelers, you know, what are the other themes you look to play? Staples have been big underperformers. We had a note coming in from Motilal Oswal who said they rather look at staples now in comparison to discretionary, where discretionary actually has been the big outperformer. But they believe the time has come to look at staples. Your take. I, I continue to be slightly negative on staples. Okay. Uh, and the two-wheeler theme you still like? Two-wheeler theme I liked, but I from the current prices and the current valuations, I'm slightly more cautious. Okay. Uh, the stocks have done phenomenal run. For example, Bajaj has done almost 50% kind of a run over the last yes. what, five or six months. Uh, Hero has done beautifully. Mm -hmm. uh, so has TVS. So um, there, there's also how, I mean, market, market these days tend to price in uh, year and a half or two years of outlook within months, right? Yeah. So it is, the, the second thing which I've been continuously saying, and I've, I think mentioned this a couple of times on your show, mm. is it's a very retail-driven market. Yeah. So two things are happening. One, uh, near-term earnings triggers get immediately priced in. Mm. Uh, second, there is a huge amount of weightage on growth over everything else. So, uh, you know, the, the whole valuation framework of the market keeps on moving. Uh, yes. 2014 to 620, all of us moved to just DCF. And mm. we started talking about terminal value and mm. what's the long-term uh, value in the particular business or stock. I think we have done a full round, round trip and gone back to 90s, which is plain and simple PEG. 
<laughs> what is the growth and what is the PE relative to, relative to that growth. So, which is why when slight amount of growth disappointments, you see sharp pullbacks in the stock prices as well. Mm. Mm. Uh, so, uh, one is the business. Second is I would keep an eye on what the valuation respective to the growth is. Mm. <clears throat> you know, retail is driving the stock market, but the government is driving uh, some of the policy-led initiatives, right, which is yeah. leading uh, outperformance in sectors, infrastructure, capital goods, railways, metros, defense, etc., etc. You said unfinished agenda market will focus on. Uh, very quickly, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get to know what, what's in the manifestos, etc. But to your mind, I mean, uh, at, the, at the team at, uh, uh, you know, uh, Ambit, what's, what's, what's happening? What's, what's the view like? Which are the sectors where this unfinished business will find most resonance in? I think in terms of sectors and specific uh, push with respect to either the CapEx plan or PLI, the government has already done a fantastic job. Mm. Um, what I would like to see, I don't know whether this will happen or not. What I, I like would like to see, to see <laughs> what I would like to see is the We labor. all have our wish list. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, so the, the labor reforms which was attempted but pulled out mm. uh, comes back on the table uh, right. with the new mandate. The naval, and naval uh, uh, labor, labor, labor yeah. reform. Sorry, uh, labor yes. reforms okay. which are stabled and okay. sort of pulled back. Okay. Some change, structural changes on the agriculture side, which was also tabled and pulled back mm. uh, in the previous term. I hope some of it comes back because it, it's time we do some uh, uh, touch some of these holy cows mm. Uh, mm. in the country, and same for land acquisition. Mm. So. Uh, the, the next big thrust India requires is manufacturing. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of uh, articles and strategy reports being written on why despite the uh, economy doing well and GDP growth being strong, uh, unemployment problem is still not fully solved. So you and need that jobs. can be solved. Yeah. Uh, there is just one thing, uh, if you, the interim budget uh, which came, right? Uh, uh, look at the allocations made there. Uh, across railways, across roads, uh, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. many of these areas, allocations actually, the growth in allocations has slowed down materially. Correct. And the, and that's the reason uh, many economists point out that there's only so much the government can do. Correct. Right? Uh, there's absorptive capacity of the economy as well. You can't just keep uh, putting in money into these sectors. That will not change even as they come back. So uh, what does that mean for, you know, as, as a theme is great, you know, capital goods and uh, PLI, et cetera, but you're reaching limits in terms of how much more the government can do. It's the private sector then. Yeah. Uh, will that show up in that way in stocks as well? That maybe they take a back seat. We're, you know, that remains the focus, but the government is is kind of taking a back seat as they've told us, and that perhaps will not change when the full budget also comes. Not necessarily, because mm. um, uh, see, many many of these companies have notched up uh, order book, mm. so book to bill ratio is reaching three and a half, four, four and a half times, right? Now, I'll just give an example of BHL from 2003 to 7, mm. or 2004 to 7, just to illustrate my point. So, bulk of the order book for BHL actually came pre-2004. Mm. Uh, but bulk of the execution happened between 4 to 7. Mm. Um, and while generally it is believed that capital goods companies perform only when the orders come in and not when the earnings are delivered, it's not really so. Mm. So, capital goods start to perform when the, when the orders start to come in. But if the earnings growth is also very strong, the performance continues. Mm. So over four to seven BHL delivered on the projects, uh, executed, mm. and uh, in, in uh, power projects, typically the last two years is when most of the margins also get booked. So mm. as the projects come for completion, the margins also see a bump up. Mm. And it was one of the best performing stocks of that time period. So same thing can happen here. Mm. Uh, fresh order intake might slow down, but book to bill is four times, four and a half times in many of these cases. Uh, as they get executed and towards the second half of execution is where bulk of the margins get booked. Uh, earnings growth can still stay robust. Okay, by the way, the stock of the moment is Avenue Supermar. Just look at that, 5.5% rally now on that stock and big volumes coming through as well on Avenue Supermar this morning. Um, it's, uh, you know, the market cap has now exceeded over 3 lakh crores for Avenue Supermar. It has come back in a big way. It just talks about how perhaps consumption has come back, right? But just trying to uh, you, to get your view on this entire sector, how do you pick and choose um, in terms of both valuation as well as growth now? So, uh, two or three things. One is, um, I mean, one of the biggest trend in the consumption sector is formalization. That trend started in, let's say, 2017 or 18, gathered pace uh, post-2020-21. So, there are a few spaces, and Avenue is a classic example of that, right? So, there are a few spaces 
within the consumption space where even if the headline growth is a little slower, uh, some of the stronger names in the sector can continue to grow at a very fast clip because informal is still a large uh, part of the pie as compared to the formal. So uh, grocery retail is one such example where informal is still a small fraction. And hence, uh, the more organized retail in grocery has a very long runway of growth, which is what Avenue is benefiting from. The growth had slowed down a bit. A small sign of a pickup in the last two quarters, and the stock's been doing very well. Uh, there are there are a few spaces. I mean, jewelry is another such example where mm -hmm. still the unorganized has a large uh, section of the whole pie, and hence the organized can. So at this price yeah. and at these valuations, you're still comfortable with names like Avenue. I mean, I'm not commenting on the specific sure, sure. stock price move here, but I think that's your. You asked me a question on what the framework one should use. The framework I think one should use is. Uh, if there is still large informal to formal shift happening, yeah. at least one, take, one can take a bet on a longer runway for growth. Okay. And then, I mean, valuations is another matter. You have to link okay. it to that. All right, Deeraj, appreciate you coming down to the studio and sharing all those thoughts with us. Wishing you a good day ahead and look forward to having a chat with you rather soon.